Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Channel 781 News Waltham City Council debrief. A lot happened in the City Council this week, so we have a lot to talk about. Um, they approved the taking of land near the new high school, uh, but with some last minute amendments. So that was very interesting. So we'll talk about that. Uh, there was a hearing for Thrive Cannabis. There was a resolution to remove an outdated word for people with intellectual disabilities from our ordinances. Uh, there was a renewal of a car dealership on Main Street. The uh, city approved, uh, they approved the city buying uh, a parking lot at 625 Moody Street. Um, there was a resolution honoring the show choir and show band. Um, they approved $5 million of ARPA funding to MWRA, the water resource for a water project. Uh, the renaming of the field station after Cornelia Warren was approved. They approved the CPA funding for documents as well. So we'll talk about all of those things. I'm here with Chris Gamble. Hello. And James Crickelli. Hello, everyone. And so now uh, there are a few more things that also happened that we're not going to tell you about, we're not going to talk about in detail, but I just want to let you know, and you can check out the video if you're interested in more. Um, one piece of good news is they finalized the funding for the rail trail or the, the portion of the rail trail that they've been talking about. So that's a done deal that will be happening. For the issue of recording and captioning meetings, they approved funding to do that. And then they passed that resolution off to the mayor. So it's now in the mayor's court. Um, to implement that, and we'll see what happens with that. There was a hearing, someone needs to uh, do some digging up of Bright Street, a portion of Bright Street for a building project that was referred to public works and public safety. Um, Councillor O'Brien uh, put forth a resolution honoring Motorcycle Safety Week. The uh, 73 bus extension resolution asking the MBTA to extend the 73 bus um, that Councillor Darcy put forward, that was approved, um, so that's passed. Uh, Councillor Harris put forth a resolution recognizing Earth Day and Arbor Day, which was approved without committee reference. Um, Councillor um, Darcy um, put forward a resolution having to do with purchasing a piece of property at One Brook Street in the Hardy Pond neighborhood, basically to use as a runoff for water, um, so that uh, to uh, mitigate some problems being caused by water running off on other properties in the neighborhood. And $9,000 was approved to the Disability Services Commission. It wasn't really clear what it was for. And I'm not really, I don't know that much about uh, what the Disability Services Commission does. So that's actually a subject I'm going to try to get some more info on for a future show. Um, we also we're going to try something new today because there's a lot of important stuff going on in the school committee. We think people need to be updated on that. We had a volunteer who went to the school committee meeting, send us some notes on what happened there. So last week in the school committee meeting, um, there was a presentation about the wraparound program, which is a program that helps students, uh, particularly English as a second language students, um, get uh, access to the resources outside school that they need in order to be successful at school. Um, there was a mention that COVID in cases have gone up somewhat. Um, if I understand correctly, it may have been linked to uh, a performance event at the school. Um, at this point, they're not bringing back masks, so and they're still um, eating lunch in the lunchroom. Um, uh, there was a lengthy discussion of the budget that the school committee will be presenting to the city council. Um, and that has been going on for several meetings and will probably continue at future meetings. Um, they discussed in particular a line item having to do with a night school. And they added a position for a school librarian at one of the elementary schools. I'm not sure which one. Um, so thank you to our volunteer for sending that info. If uh, anyone else is interested in helping us out, keeping track of what going, what's going on at these meetings, please um, do get in touch. And we now also have a Medium page where we can post written content. So if you're interested in writing about what's going on in Waltham, get in touch with me as well. So uh, going into some of our uh, issues we want to discuss in a little more detail, we're going to start off um, with the approval of the CPA funds um, for studying documents. Chris, can you tell us about that? 
So yeah, this is actually going to be a correction, um, not something we uh, normally do. Uh, but sometimes, you know, we're going to read things wrong. You know, we're not experts in anything. This is not really uh, our job. This is just just a few people just coming and talking about city council. So uh, the last debrief, we talked about how the city approved $3 million of CPA money to um, look over all the historical documents. Um, and that seemed outrageous. So uh, I personally said that was outrageous. Um, but the only problem is that it wasn't $3 million. It was $3,000. And that's way more... <laughs> that's a way better deal than $3 million. Um, and so I would like to apologize to uh, Joe Bizarre, our city clerk, um, for uh, that mistake. Um, I actually really like Joe. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, Josh, if you could let me do that. Um, is, uh, this is our city clerk, Joe Bizarre. I think he's really cool. I mean, I would like to apologize again, Joe, for saying that. But I will say I am still a little uncomfortable with the city government using CPA money for things that they should just put in their budget anyway. Um, so the correction there. Thank you, Chris. And yes, I suspect um, that uh, uh, Mr. Vizard also played. Uh, we don't know exactly how this was moved forward, the idea of recording and captioning meetings, how that was moved forward in City Hall, but I suspect he played a big role in that. So a shout out to him for that as well. Um, so now going on to something we discussed last week, um, and uh, there's a, uh, another uh, chapter to it. Um, James, can you try to take a stab at summarizing what happened with the issue of taking land near the new high school? Sure. And uh, so essentially what happened was there, since the last meeting, uh, there were several late file communications from the mayor uh, amending the uh, taking of the property in accordance with feedback received since that last meeting, and there had been a neighborhood meeting that was uh, facilitated by uh, Ward 3 Councillor Darcy uh, because uh, Councillor Dunn, the Ward 2 Councillor, had to recuse herself because of her proximity to the property. And uh, he felt that that meant that the residents were not getting properly represented. That meeting was attended by so several of the uh, at-large councillors as well. And uh, by the way, this is the property that's the farm property adjacent to the new school. And a number of the amendments were basically directly from neighbor feedback, which was uh, further restricting the traffic cut through and uh, the lighting at all, uh, including like, you know, security lighting and all the, like, just generally not wanting light pollution. Uh, the one restriction that did make it through in addition to the ones that the mayor proposed based on the feedback was a restriction on activity after 9 p.m. on the property. Yeah, so this was really interesting. So they, uh, at the Committee of the Whole, they voted to approve all three parts of this, this thing, uh, despite the fact that there seemed like um, the counselors had some issues that weren't totally addressed. So uh, it had to be officially approved uh, by the full council, even though it's the same people, it had to be approved tonight. And, and we were expecting that to be uneventful because if they approved it last week, why wouldn't they approve it tonight? But a lot happened between then and now. There was this neighborhood meeting um, where the mayor actually agreed to make put seven conditions into uh, the giving the land to the school. And um, I have the seven conditions. And now, as uh, James mentioned, this was a late file. And actually, a lot of the things in this meeting were late files, which means we don't have any anything in writing saying what they talked about. We have to just write it down um, from the video. So I hope I get these right. But the conditions that the mayor um, put on the use of the land is it cannot be used for a stadium or a parking lot, um, but a, it could be used for an athletics field with bleachers. Um, there's no cut through traffic, meaning you can't use it to drive from um, the street to the school. There is an exception for city and school vehicles can use um, the easement to drive onto the property. We think that they're not allowed to drive to the school that way. They're only allowed to use it to access the property itself, but we weren't totally clear on that from the wording. Um, 
the third condition was that it could be used for parking if it was parking related to one of the approved uses. So a parking lot for a athletic field or for the farm maybe could go there. That wasn't totally clear. Um, the fourth condition was walkers, including school walkers, will be able to access it. So kids walking to school are allowed to cut through there. It seemed to imply walkers from the neighborhood are allowed to cut through there too, although it's not clear how that's going to work because they mentioned it's going to be higher security than a park because it's part of the school. Um, number five was it has at least a portion of it has to be used for agriculture or horticulture. The school committee can decide what portion. Number six was there can't be any floodlights on the property pointing at other properties, but security lighting was okay. And that was one that um, Councillor Darcy tried to change and the mayor uh, insisted that there had to be security lighting there. That wasn't something she could change. Number seven was an odd one. It said it, any use um, that would be allowed in the RA2 zone, which is what it is in, is allowed on the property. Um, but it had been explained in the previous meeting that schools are exempt from zoning. So it's not really clear what that condition means, if that actually opens up other uses uh, besides what we've talked about or not. Um, and then the eighth condition was the one that Councillor Darcy did successfully add, which is no night activity at all, no activity at all after 9 p.m. And the mayor said that was fine because that's already a rule for the school itself is they can't have outdoor activities with lights after 9 p.m. So she thought that was a reasonable update. So uh, Chris, did you ever have any comments on this? There was a lot to talk about here. I guess the first two things right off the top of my head is that I remember when we were talking about the schematics of the new school. Um, this is one of the very few school committee meetings I went to. Um, they talked about how their initial plan for fields, for athletic fields, wasn't, it didn't work. Um, and they had to actually uh, take away one of the fields. And so for the mayor to push really hard that this could be used for a field with bleachers just says to me in a couple of years, is, is that actually going to be a farm? Or is that actually just going to be another athletic field? Um, so, you know, hopefully it's a farm, but uh, it is what it is now. Um, it's, it's in the hands of the mayor and the school committee. Um, and I thought uh, George looked really good here. Um, you know, this is really shows a lot of George's strengths. Yeah, uh, just to add to that. So, I, you know, Chris has talked before about how, you know, if you want to get anything done, it, it requires uh, public pressure for months or sometimes years. But there are sometimes these cases where something seems like a done deal and then the word gets out that it's about to be a done deal and then something major changes at the last minute. So that's kind of exciting. So, you know, if you hear something going on in city council and no one's talking about it and you get people talking about it, it actually that can change the outcome sometimes in a surprisingly short amount of time. I also want to take this opportunity to say something positive about how President McMenamin led the discussion because it got really, um, when they had an order and then the mayor introduced amendments and then Councillor Darcy was trying to introduce amendments on top of that, some of the councillors got really confused and really frustrated really quickly trying to understand what the amendments would do. And Councillor McMenamin actually did a good job of dealing with that where like she wanted people to understand but she also wanted to keep moving forward and not get uh, so I thought she did a great job. It was one of those meetings where it was good to have someone with a strong personality like that to keep things moving forward. James, did you have anything else to add? Yeah, I, I definitely want to second that because that was like a very confusing moment there. I ended up having to like rewatch it and then like rewind a few times just to get what was going on. We, we've talked, I think, in the, in the previous one about like, you know, there's like a delicate balance between like people making people feel like you're just slowing things down and like actually like you know doing some stuff that's like important to get out there and i think darcy was definitely came out looking good on that front but you could definitely sense that it was annoying people that it was dragging things out further there's, there's yeah i want to i want to point out uh, for the record uh, for the historical uh, preservation that uh my good friend joey lacava voted against the uh, uh all three uh matters related to one bomb app uh, i would like people to remember that he voted against that farm um although i'm sure he has uh, 
perfectly valid uh, reasons why. And also, Carlos voted for the, uh, one of the matters he voted no against, but everyone besides that was all unanimous. Yeah, uh, Councillor LaCava voted no for all three, and we don't know why, because there were so many issues raised at the last meeting, and not all of them were addressed here. So he, his, his issue could have been with any number of things. The fact that they're saying they're using this for a farm, but there's no money to actually uh, maintain a farm, that wasn't addressed by these amendments. In the past meeting, uh, both the mayor and Councillor McMenamin expressed the idea that maybe, even if this didn't end up being a farm, maybe it was worth the money to protect the neighborhoods by taking this land. But then it kind of, um, you know, begged the question of, well, if you're doing it to protect the neighbors, why don't you have the neighbors weighing in and, you know, talking about giving restrictions on things that they don't want to see there because that wouldn't be protecting um, their neighborhood. So in that sense, the amendments addressed it because they were totally based on, you um, uh, the suggestions from the neighbors. Um, so if it doesn't turn out being a farm, it at least will, the neighbors will be happy with it. But there were still a whole bunch of questions that weren't addressed. Like why was this um, a taking instead of just a regular purchase? We never found out about that. With things like property and stuff like that, there's like, uh, the, the, there's like a limited time window for some, some things like that. Like, especially if there's like, you know, other offers out there or whatever so like you can kind of appreciate the need for like expediting this type of stuff and but and, and i mean like to the mayor's credit like including like that is like a conscientious thing to be doing um but you can kind of tell that this is also like a defensive thing like not wanting to have a 40b go in there not wanting to have it get developed in some way that isn't uh you know farming or an open field i guess but the the, the reluctance to sort of restrict it in those ways also sort of points to like they they don't want to artificially lower the value or like restrict how the property could be hypothetically be used in the future because like you said they said that it is usable for all ra2 uses which i mean like kind of hypothetically if they resell the property they don't want to have a bunch of restrictions on it i'm guessing so the next issue is there was uh, a public hearing for thrive which is one of the companies that wants to open a cannabis dispensary um, in Waltham. And before we start with that, I have an anecdote. Usually Chris is in charge of anecdotes, but I have an anecdote. So a few weeks ago, uh, Uma Flower had their public hearing. Um, and uh, a few days later, I went to Veronica's, which is the convenience store at the end of my street. So it's a place I go a lot uh, and have been a lot uh, the whole time I've lived here. And uh, Davis Patel was working behind the counter. And I met him when we did our special report on Uma Flowers uh, because he is his sister, Priyanka, and his wife, Tejal, are the co founders of Uma Flower. And um, so I knew that his parents owned uh, Veronica's, but the reason it was surprising he was there was because he's a doctor. Um, this came up in the hearing for Uma because he was listed as a part of their team, but he's also a full-time doctor. So they clarified he was more of an advisor, but he was working at Veronica's because um, the person who would usually work that shift was sick and his dad was traveling. So he was next in line to work the counter there. Um, and he had heard our report on that hearing and he really appreciated it, but he wanted us to know because I was speculating about, well, why did they really want this hearing? What did they hope to get out of it? And he said it really was just, um, to do their presentation for the two new counselors. That was it. That's all they wanted to get out of it. So I was thinking about this because, you know, this is a kind of family that usually gets a certain amount of respect in Waltham, like a family that starts a small business that becomes important to the community and then their kids have access to education where they could go other places and do other things, but they want to stay in Waltham and start a bigger business. And, uh, you know, a lot of uh, our elected officials come from families that have that kind of story. So it would be interesting to see if that kind of thing is considered with UMA. Um, but so far, we don't really have a process to consider anything like that. We have a process where we're waiting on a traffic study and we don't know uh, if it's true, you know, that the mayor um, is going to refuse to do host agreements. It could be whichever company sues um, that ends up moving in first. So it's too bad that we don't get to look at 
at it in that way. And Thrive is another company um, with Waltham Connections. It is owned by uh, Anthony Cardillo. Um, and the Cardillo family owns an excavation company that's very well established in Waltham. Um, so they had another public hearing um, last night. And just like Uma, they had already done a hearing when they started the process. And they were having another hearing um, because on the grounds that there are new counselors. And also Middlesex, which is the other one of the other applicants, uh, was supposed to do the same thing and actually was supposed to be last night, but they put it off at their request. We don't know why. Um, but we learned a little bit more about their business. They are hoping to open a cultivation um, facility in Shirley. So they have their own supply, which was actually something we learned about UMA too, is that they're also hoping to open their own cultivation um, facility. Um, the lawyer for the Cardillo said that they plan to give it about $25,000 a year to local charities in addition to the taxes that the city makes. And he mentioned that Mr. Cardillo's favorite charity is youth sports. So uh, that money might be going to youth sports. Uma had also mentioned that they wanted to partner with local organizations, but they didn't um, specify. Um, and Councillor Cates and Councillor Bradley both asked questions that were very similar to what they asked in the last hearing, and um, which I think is good that they're being fair. Um, and uh, Councillor Bradley MacArthur's questions sort of focus more on their role in the neighborhood, which is what I was talking about, that, that that's something we should consider is, is um, the role they already play in the neighborhood and the role that they would play um, if they get to open up. And so it was a good hearing, but it was also very frustrating because it looks like we're gonna, if, if each of the, the um, applicants comes back and does a hearing like this, that's a lot of extra hours spent on a process that's already been going on for a long time. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I give my best to Thrive and I give my best to UMA, but unfortunately, uh, it's not fun listening to these hearings because they shouldn't be happening. We shouldn't need another hours and hours to discuss something that's been discussed for years. The, the lawyer seems so annoyed at having to go over the whole uh, buffer zone issue thing, which again, just because of how restrictive the zoning is in yes. all of them and all that, it's just like, like they, so, so it goes from being like, oh, there's only like a small sliver of Bear Hill Road that you can put all these dispensaries to, oh, suddenly there's there might be a reason why you can't because of Waltham's specific boutique zoning on dispensaries. <laughs> and just... Yeah, I forgot to mention that in my summary. So the the um, I'm not sure who received it, if it was the council or the committee, but they received a letter informing them that some of these dispensaries could be in violation um, uh, because of a certain business that's uh, in proximity. And from what I understand is the business is a physical therapist. So it's a place where they might treat children, but it's not something that specializes in children. But somehow whoever wrote the letter thought that it was a violation. And so they asked the lawyer questions about this. And basically he, you know, he said, well, it's up to you if it's a violation because the town can make whatever rules they want. But under kind of the precedent that the state has set, this is not a place where children gather, so it, it, it really isn't an issue. Um, but those, the city law department will still have to look at it and decide if it's an issue. But the thing is, as you said, if it's an issue, it's because that's where the city council put the zoning and they did, that's why they're there. So another uh, late file addition to the agenda was from Councillor Durkee. Um, so we don't have the text of it and we don't know who else signed on to it. He implied that a bunch of people signed on to it. Um, but the resolution would ask the law department to come up with a plan to remove from our city ordinances an outdated uh, term for people with intellectual disabilities um, that's now considered very offensive and replace it with the term intellectual disabilities, which he said that's the term um, that was suggested to him by opportunities for inclusion. 
um, which is a, uh, uh, an organization that serves people with intellectual disabilities. Um, so I thought this was great. Um, it's a symbolic gesture, but it's a pretty important symbolic gesture. He pointed out that both the state and the federal government did something similar to this over 10 years ago. So it's pretty conspicuous if Waltham's that far behind in using these words. And I appreciate the fact that he reached out to an organization to get advice. And I hope that is the approach they're going to use when they talk about the fernal. And that's the approach when they're going to use when they talk about sidewalk safety yeah. is to get disabled people in the conversation. And if you don't know how to do that, then you reach out to an organization that serves disabled people and they, gets their help. It can only be a good thing to to be improving this and honestly to involve disabled people more broadly in the conversations and stuff in the city. I think mean, this also ties into like, you know, things as simple as getting captioning on videos and stuff like that. So I think it's a good thing. Chris? Yeah, I, I agree. I think it was a, I just think it was a home run of a resolution. Uh, it's exactly how I like counselors to do resolutions, which is uh, to take advice and leadership from groups in the city that are already doing the work on the ground. And so I'm glad that Durkee worked with Opportunities for Inclusion. I'm curious if it was Opportunities for Inclusion that reached out to him or he reached out to them. It's hard to see the impetus there. Um, I do, I do would like to say, you know, this is a symbolic gesture and there's a lot more uh, that the city could be doing for disability rights. I should have asked this before, but do we know where the sidewalk safety resolution is right now? Don't recall seeing it come up at all. I believe it was in public works and public safety. Okay, well, I would say, you know, this is a, a, a very um, good symbolic gesture to the community of, of disabled people. The recording and captionings of meetings is, is will have more of a direct impact on people. But if the council really wants to do something that will have a very direct impact on um, disabled people, then they should uh, move forward that sidewalk safety resolution and they should have to, to people with physical disabilities um, involved in that discussion because um, that would be more than symbolic. That would also have a big um, impact on people's daily life. So I would challenge them to, to move that forward. Yeah, so it's still tabled in public works as of 222. Okay, got it. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, the city purchasing a parking lot at 625 Moody. What do we know about 625 Moody? So 625 Moody Street is the old Bank of America, which is near like um, the Gordons on Moody Street. Um, and uh, just just quickly, I just think it's just unimaginative uh, to turn that piece of property into a parking lot. I remember when it was announced it was going to turn into a parking lot. There was a you know a robust discussion amongst online with Waltham related thing, but what could be done with this property? And there's so many different things that you could be doing uh, with that nice patch of land. I think it's a great location and see Waltham's gonna turn it into a parking lot. I know as someone who doesn't drive, I hear people's complain that there's not enough parking on Moody Street. I don't really care uh, about that. Um, and I would like to see it not become a parking lot, but it's going to, and that's a shame. Uh, I will say, I been to that part of Moody Street a fair amount and I've never had a hard time finding parking and like it's already a parking lot it's just they're going to make it into a bigger parking lot is what it sounds like that you have to pay for I there could have definitely been something more imaginative done there and yeah that's all I have. Okay. So moving on, that's something uh, easy to agree on. So there was a resolution in favor uh, that honoring the um, Waltham Show Choir and Show Band who have been winning a ton of awards. And um, it was Councillor, I believe it was Councillor Cates who had introduced it, but it was Councillor McMenamin's intention to have them in, <laughs> which would have been really interesting because it's a very small room to begin with. It's a very big choir. Um, but they couldn't find a date because they are so booked. They are in such high demand that they are turning. They 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 are too busy to perform for city council. So I think that's awesome. Shout out to the show choir and the show band. In lieu of having them come in there, the mayor I think is going to be taking me to go to meet with the the choir and present it. Oh yes, they mentioned that's tonight. So as we're recording this Tuesday night, there's a concert of the show choir and show band and several council members will be there and the mayor will be there to honor them. So we can't plug it because by the time you see this, it'll be passed, but um, I hope that's going well for them. 
Um, the next uh, item is the uh, allocation of $5 million of ARPA funds for MWRA, um, which is the Water Authority. James, um, do you know more about this one? So this was also a late file from the mayor. So unfortunately, we don't have the exact text or any of the ex like exact stuff around it. But uh, from previous council uh, reports, like there's a uh, currently like a large project under like involving uh, expansion of like the MWRA's like water aqueduct from uh, like the reservoir west of Boston into Boston, and I guess bottle Boston has a bottleneck that is around Waltham there. There's currently MWRA work that's going to be happening to expand or to, to basically add a second, another bypass to that. And I have a feeling that this is probably related to that. And this $5 million for this is for all of the work associated with, um, I can't remember what the exact wording was, but like water work, basically, including the police details, like for the street closures and all that type of stuff. So it's just more mun municipal water work. Cornelia Warren. So they finalized um, a committee recommendation to name the field station after Cornelia Warren. That is so uh, Waltham Community Farm is the farm, but the piece of property that it's on Waltham Fields Community Farm, excuse me, is the correct name of the farm, but the property it's on has traditionally be called the field station because it was UMass's field station. That will now be uh, named after Cornelia Warren. Uh, Chris, did you have anything to say about that? I just, just very quickly, you know, we always use the words like Waltham Field Station or Waltham Community Field. And I haven't talked to the farmers exactly, but it, it would be good for the residents to start shifting their language because now this is it is the Cornelia Warren farm the Cornelia Warren field station so I'm going to try to start using that language instead when referring to the farm and just a reminder for everyone who's like doing that I think it's great I think Cornelia Warren should be remembered as a great philanthropist of Waltham um, and uh, I'm happy to see this. I, that's everything for tonight that was a very exciting meeting um, and uh, we will be back next week with the city council committee meetings. Thanks a lot, everybody. Long debrief. Bye, everyone.